Hello, I'm Kevin Zettel, a technical marketing engineer here at Infoblox, and today we're here to talk about Infoblox's new integration with Tuffin. First, I'll do an overview of Infoblox's ecosystem and what it provides. Then, I'll do an overview of Tuffin integration and what you can expect from it. Then, I'll show you some use cases with the integration. Then, I'll show you how to set everything up in a working example. And finally, I'll close it out with a summary of everything that I'll be demoing. First, a brief overview of the Infoblox ecosystem and how it works. When events occur, such as obtaining a new lease, bringing a new host, or malicious sites being accessed, Infoblox triggers events on its appliances to send information about what just happened to third-party vendors and partners such as Tuffin and many more. These security partners can then use this information to manage security and network policies, quarantine endpoints, block connections, run scans, and much more. And with Outbound API and Tuffin, we are now able to respond faster to network changes with the help of Infoblox's ecosystem license. Using Tuffin, admin can get networks on Infoblox with context and automate policies around these networks. Additionally, with this integration, Tuffin admin can get information on security events when Infoblox discovers a device has tried to access a malicious site. In the end, this allows admin to modernize network and security policies with automation by way of the information shared between the two devices automatically, and in return, increase ROI on both products. Let's look at the security use case. Here, a user tries to make a DNS request to a domain that isn't allowed. Next, the DNS request is blocked by Infoblox. Infoblox's ecosystem templates are then triggered, sending information about the event to Tuffin. Finally, using Tuffin, admin can see the events with information on what just occurred and create customized policies to handle it. Now let's see that in action. Here, I'm making a simple dig request to badsite.com, which emulates a DNS request that the user can make. And here you can see that the NX domain was handed out by Infoblox Appliance with information in the additional section of the return field. When I head over the Tuffin instance and refresh, we can see that the task was created with information on what just occurred. Let's look at the use case where Infoblox can add new subnets to Tuffin zones. Here, an admin creates a network, and in return, this causes the ecosystem templates to be triggered sending information to Tuffin instance with information about the network. Finally, the subnet is added to a Tuffin zone, which you can use to automatically create policies around. Now let's see that integration in action. Here, I'm going to create a network with CIDR 10.10.10.0/24. And of course, we can decide if we want to add the network or not with the extensible attributes. When I hit refresh, you can see that Tuffin's sync time extensible attribute was updated with a timestamp when the network was last shared with Tuffin. When I head over to Tuffin and hit refresh, we can see that the device was added to the Infoblox zone. Now let's look at the use case where Tuffin can update Infoblox networks with Tuffin zones. Here, an Infoblox admin has created a time for when Infoblox should sync its networks with Tuffin subnets. When the time hits, Infoblox triggers its ecosystem template to grab the subnets from Tuffin and update Infoblox's networks, and in the end, allowing admin to keep Infoblox within compliance with Tuffin zones. Now let's see the integration in action. Here on the right, an admin has already created two subnets on the Tuffin instance, and when the time is right, ecosystem templates will be triggered, sending information to the Infoblox instance with a list of Tuffin subnets to add and update to Infoblox's networks. After a minute, I'll hit refresh, and you can see that the subnets are added to the Infoblox appliance. Now let's see how to set everything up. First, you'll want to go to community.infoblox.com and download the templates for the Tuffin integration. Second, you'll want to create zones on the Tuffin appliance and create a user with permissions. Finally, you'll want to set up your Infoblox grid for the integration. To do this, add some extensible attributes, then add the templates, add the endpoints, and finally add the notifications. For a final note, you'll want to purchase and download Infoblox's ecosystem gridwide license in order to activate the integration's capabilities. 
Now let's walk through how to set everything up. On the Toughen side, let's take a brief second to show how to create a Toughen zone. Inside Toughen Secure Track, you want to navigate to Network, Zones, and here you want to click the Add Zone button and enter the name for your zone. Now here, I'll be showing you how to set everything up on Infoblox's side. First, you want to go to Administration, Extensible Attributes, and here you want to create six extensible attributes, which include Toughen Last Instant, which contains the last date and time when an asset had an instant sent from Infoblox. Toughen Sync Time, which contains a date and time when the network was synchronized to Toughen. Toughen Sync, which defines if a network should be synced with Toughen with a true or false value. Toughen Zone, which defines a list of possible Toughen zones to push networks to from Infoblox. Toughen Send Instant, which defines if an asset should send an instant if an RPZ ADP or DNS telling event occurred by a value of true or false. Toughen Zone, which defines a list of possible Toughen zones to push networks to from Infoblox. Toughen Sync Zones, which defines a list of possible Toughen zones to be synced to an Infoblox network feed by pulling subnets from Toughen into Infoblox. Next, you want to go to Grid Ecosystem Templates, and here you want to add the four templates for the Toughen integration that can be found on the Infoblox community site. These include the Toughen Networks, Toughen Network Sync, Toughen Security, and Toughen Management. Here, you can see that the templates are just a simple JSON file with some simple logic that can be manipulated to do different things. Now we want to go to Grid Ecosystem App on Endpoint, and here you want to add an endpoint. Under the General tab, you want to add the URI of the Toughen instance you're seeing the information to, as well as the name and a vendor for the endpoint. Also, you'll need to add the username and password to the Toughen instance, then add the Infoblox Grid's username and password for the WAPI credentials. Next, you can add the validation, however for demo purposes, I'm not using one. And here, I'm using the current Grid Master, however, for production, it is best practice to use the Grid Master candidate. Next, in the Session Management tab, add the log level set to debug. However, for production, it is best practice to set the log level to info or higher. Then, when the session template has been selected, parameters attached to that session template will be loaded. However, for this integration, there are no parameters. Finally, for the extensible attributes, we have none. Next, you want to go to Notifications and add a notification for the events. A notification is the way that we connect the templates and the endpoint to the grid using some simple rules. And here, you can decide what type of events you want to have trigger the ecosystem templates. Under the General tab, you want to create a name for the notification and select the name of the targeted endpoint that you are using. In this case, I'm using the Toughen endpoint that I just showed. Then, under the Rules tab, you can set the rules that you want to have trigger the template. In this case, DNS RPZ events for the source IP that matches the CIDR 10.0.0.0/8 will trigger the templates. For security notifications, you have an additional option under the tab called deduplication. Here, you want to enable event deduplication to avoid triggering the template for the same event more than once. Here, you can choose to lock all the dropped events. Simply choose the items available and click the arrow to move them over. Under the templates tab, you can decide which templates you want to have triggered when the event that matches the rules that you set in the Rules tab occurs. Here, you'll see that once it's selected, that the instance variables that are attached to the template are shown. And here's where you can decide what you want to set the instance variables to. In this case, we don't have instance variables for this template. Finally, I want to show you one more thing. If we navigate to Administration, Network Views, here you'll be able to set the network view where you should inherit the extensible attributes from. Also, you want to add the Toughen Sync Zones here, so that Infoblox will know what zones from Toughen to sync into the Infoblox network views. Now let's see the integration in action. First, let's see how the security events work. Here, we can see that the IP of the device is 10603253. And here, I'm making a simple dig request to the Infoblox grid with the domain that will be blocked. Dig command is just simply emulating a DNS request that could be made by a user. Here, we can see that the NX domain was handed out by the Infoblox appliance with the information in the additional section of the return field. On the Infoblox's appliance, we can see that the device extensible attribute Toughen Last Instant was updated with the timestamp. 
And when I head over to Toughness side and hit refresh, we can see that the task was created with information on what just occurred. Now let's see how the network events work. Here, I'm going to create a network with a CIDR 10.10.10.0/24. I'm going to make sure that the extensible attributes are set correctly. The extensible attributes can be changed easily by changing the inheritance state from inherited to overridden. When I hit refresh, you can see that the toughened sync time extensible attribute was updated to the timestamp when the network was last shared with Toughen. When I head over to Toughen and hit refresh, we can see that the device was added to the Infoblox zone. When I head back to Infoblox's appliance and change the comment and hit refresh, we'll see that the Toughen timestamp was updated. And a description of the Toughen instance is also updated. When I head back to the Infoblox appliance the second time, we can also change the zone so that it updates on the Toughen instance. And of course, if the network is deleted on the Infoblox instance, then the subnet will also be deleted on the Toughen instance. Now let's see how we're able to sync the networks from Toughen to Infoblox. Here on the right, an admin has already created two subnets on the Toughen instance. And when the time is right, ecosystem templates will be triggered, sending information to the Infoblox instance with a list of networks to add and update. When a minute passes and I hit refresh, we can see that the subnets are added to the Infoblox appliance. Now when I change the description of one of the subnets on the Toughen side, we will see after a minute passes that the network will update on the Infoblox appliance. Now let's walk through what we just saw. First, we had a user access a malicious site and saw that they were blocked and information about what just happened was shared with Toughen. Then, when we created a network and modified it on Infoblox, we saw that Toughen added the network to its zone and updated the modifications. Then finally, when Toughen admin created networks on Toughen, we saw that they were also added to the Infoblox appliance automatically with comments from the description. So this all around maximizes your security investment increases the visibility for security operations, and automates incidents responses. Well, thank you for your time. If you have any questions or concerns, you can find me or any of our other experts here at Infoblox on the Infoblox community website at community.infoblox.com. Thank you for your time. Have a great rest of your day.